So I wanted to talk a little bit about a recent experience. I was involved in a Zoom conference uh, on courageous and unifying conversations around having uh, different perspectives. So it was a structured, uh, it was structured as an unrehearsed conversation among panelists. And since we're living in an increasingly divided and polarized world, uh, this was a very important conversation and I was happy to be part of it. It was a very helpful uh, experience for me actually. Um, I had a lot of anxiety around being involved in this unscripted conversation. Uh, while preparing, I watched other teachings and was looking for some kind of template or something um, uh, that could help me. Um, even labeling it as unscripted brought apprehension. So it's interesting how we look outside of ourselves for guidance when feeling anxiety or feeling like uh, somehow we're not enough. Difficult conversations are uncomfortable. I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing or not live up to my own or others' expectations. Yet if I want to overcome anxiety, fear, shame, I need to choose courage over comfort. To have the courage to show up when I can't control the outcome. So having some understanding of dependent arising, we know that it's impossible to control outcomes because there's so many causes and conditions that create an outcome. Thinking that I can control an outcome only brings separation polarization, and I misapprehend the experience because I have such a narrow view. So having all of these thoughts while preparing for this conference reminded me of the research that Dr. Brene Brown has done on vulnerability. She says that when we build cultures with zero tolerance for vulnerability and where perfectionism is rewarded and necessary, we aren't able to have difficult conversations. We end up talking about people instead of talking to people. This certainly seems like what's going on a lot these days. I was brought up to believe courage and vulnerability were on the opposite ends of the spectrum. I was taught that vulnerability was a weakness. Was anybody here taught that? In her research, uh, Dr. Brown defines vulnerability as uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. So you've got to ask, what is courage made up of if not uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure? So vulnerability is not weakness. And the uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure we face every day are not an option. This is our samsaric experience. Our willingness to own and engage with our vulnerability determines the depth of our courage and the clarity of our purpose. The level to which we protect ourselves from being vulnerable is a measure of our fear and our disconnection. If we wait until we are perfect before doing something, which I have done a lot in my life, boy, we waste so much precious time. We sacrifice relationships and opportunities. We turn our back on our unique talents. Dr. Brown says that vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, and creativity. It is the source of hope, empathy, accountability, and authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. Giving feedback, getting feedback, ethical decision-making, problem-solving, these are all part of vulnerability. 
our habit of looking outside of ourselves for the answers, for peace of mind, runs very deep. At least it does with me. Vulnerability is the first thing I look for in you, but often the last thing I want to see in me. Or I want you to see in me, sorry. So thankfully, the Buddha taught so many methods that we can apply to recognize when we're disconnected, and so many methods to use to connect to other living beings. So this is our work. With courage to show up unscripted, to open up our hearts, and make connection, and to let go of trying to control the outcome. This is what I tried to do during the conference. And it was a very satisfying experience, and it was not at all perfect. <laughs>